Hello, so this is the second review I'm doing, Drift Specs, as you know by the title. Drift Specs are slightly harder to review than Drag Specs, since Drag Specs are all about straight line speed and power. Drift Specs are more about handling and how the car feels. In April they released an update, as you know, um, they changed the handling of all Drift Specs, which made this video a little bit harder to make, so I had to delete it and restart again basically. But the problem was, I, I spent about an hour testing all the cars one lap around the Golden Hills racetrack and I noticed something they all handle pretty much exactly the same so before they all handled pretty similar but you can tell the differences so the Shelby was made with slightly longer corners and didn't chain as well but the Ford Focus that was short corners and chained a lot better but now they all handle like the RX-7 so if you had that if you were driving that a lot you probably pretty prepare for this handling but they all handle pretty similar so Ubisoft said they're a lot easier to handle now. Uh, there's a big uproar about it in the uh, forums again. People are happy, people don't like it. Personally, I think they are a bit easier to handle. Now they handle all the same. So now when you drive them, you'll turn into a corner. And if you turn out, the car will sort of shoot outwards, pushing you out. Which if you can't, if you full throttle it, it will take you out of drift and spin you out. But if you can control it, it eases the drift. So you can take corners longer, change the angle a lot more when you're drifting and it now makes it slightly easier to chain in my opinion. Like I said again, even though acceleration and top speed aren't really important for a drift car, I'll just go through which I think are the quickest and quickest drift cars. So the hyper cars are so the Aguera, the Lamborghini Aventador and the Rough CCR3 all accelerate really really quickly. Also surprisingly the Shelby, that's a really quick off the line car. So in the quarter mile, not the drag racing these things, in the quarter mile they're the fastest cars to use. After a couple of days driving other cars, you can tell some slight differences with the handling. It's still very very similar. But you can tell cars, the heavier cars, so the Charger in particular, the 668 Charger, it's very heavy. You can tell when it corners, it still corners as well as the other cars, but the turning direction is slightly slower and it sort of flops around a little bit more. But cars, the Aguera, the Aventador, again, uh, the 370Z, very, very light cars. And you can tell because they're very nimble. The Aguera in particular turns very, very quickly. It's very darty. It's controllable, but very, very darty. So that's the car I used in the uh, last summit. In my opinion, the update was good and bad in a way. It was bad because now all the cars handle the same. There's no differences, really. So you can't really know one car shines above all the others. In some way, that's a good thing because now all the cars, in my opinion, are easy to handle. Other people disagree strongly on the forums, but there's no clear best car. So before, I like the Merchilago, but it was one of the worst drift cars. It just didn't turn very well. But now it's a good car, like all the rest of them. So I've been using some of them, using the qualifier. Skyline, I didn't like it. It drift, didn't drift very well, in my opinion. It was too easy to spin out. But now you can use all these cars on summits, all of them qualifiers when you go to meet, you can use any car you want. Makes it a little bit nicer. So the review. Um, there is no best drift car. I'd say now buy whatever drift car you want. It doesn't really make a difference what you buy. I'd say the hyper cars are slightly better for summits, tighter turn, tighter corners, that kind of thing. But overall you're not really gonna notice much of a difference, so you can just go and buy any drift car you want. I hope you found this video helpful and useful and thank you for watching.